Ladies and gentlemen, here is the Pro Football Hall of Fame class of 2020. A two-time All-Pro and winner of Super Bowls 32 and 33 with the Denver Broncos, Steve Atwater. The Rams all-time leader in career receptions, receiving yards and touchdown catches, and a winner of Super Bowl 34, Isaac Bruce. One of the game's greatest uh, route runners, Bruce Rand. Don't forget the 73 yard touchdown reception against the Tennessee Titans to win the Super Bowl. At his retirement, his streak of 127 consecutive games with a reception was longest in NFL history, Harold Carmichael. He protected Jim McMahon's blind side while also clearing the way for Walter Payton's running attack. A winner of Super Bowl XX, Jimbo Covert. The NFL Coach of the Year in 1992, he led the Steelers to their Super Bowl 40 win over Seattle, Bill Cowher. A four-time All-Pro, his 52 career interceptions remain the Green Bay Packers franchise record, Bobby Dillon. Originally undrafted, he went on to six Pro Bowl appearances as well as championships with the Cowboys in Super Bowl VI and XII, Cliff Harris. An AFL All-Star at both left and right tackle, his protection of Broadway Joe Namath helped the Jets to the greatest upset in NFL history, Winston Hill. And Winston Hill opened up holes for Matt Snell and ran for 121 yards as Hill caved in Baltimore's D-line. And most of all, Kurt, he's a Texas Southern University student like I was. So I'm very proud of Winston Hill. Congratulations. Ah. He joins Walter Jones as one of two Seahawk offensive linemen selected to the Hall of Fame, Steve Hutchinson. When you talk about great duos in the history of the game, Steve and Walter Jones certainly are on that short list. How Seattle let this guy go, I still don't know. He led the NFL in attempts, rushing yards and scrimmage yards, en route to being named 1999's NFL Offensive Rookie of the Year, Edgerin James. The NFL Coach of the Year in 1990. He led the Cowboys to back-to-back -back championships in Super Bowls 27 and 28, Jimmy Johnson. The dominant defensive tackle of his era, who once started 153 consecutive games, and a member of the NFL's team of the 60s, Alex Karras. He's one of the most char original characters to ever play the game of football. He paved the way for all three of us guys sitting up here. We extended our careers in movies and television. He was in Blazing Saddles. He was in Webster, a character off the field, but a heck of a player on the field. In 2010, he was both the NFL's Defensive Player of the Year and the Walter Payton Man of the Year a member of Pittsburgh's championship teams winning Super Bowls 40 and 43. Troy Palomalu. I do everything safety who made acrobatic plays everywhere. A fierce tackler, someone all quarterbacks feared, and we all noticed his beautiful long black locks flowing from his helmet. A 35-time Emmy Award winner, his artistic vision revolutionized how fans watched all their favorite sports on TV, and none more than the NFL. Steve Sable. Steve Sable had the daunting task of chronicling the history of the NFL. His legacy lives on with the remarkable work that they do at NFL Films. He led or shared the team lead for interceptions five times and was a mainstay of all four Steelers' dynasty Super Bowl wins, Donnie Schell. Donnie Shell was one, one of the beautiful teammates, the ninth teammate that I played with who has now made it into the Hall of Fame. Undrafted free agent, a great 14-year career, and a feared, feared tackler on defense. This two-way lineman during the NFL's earliest days was also the NFL's longest-tenured black player during that era, Duke Slater. As a black player in the 1920s, he played 10 years getting his law degree. While he played, he ended up being the first black judge on the Chicago Superior Court. Wow. Talk about a trailblazer. He set every major receiving record in the All-American Football Conference and led the NFL in receptions with the Browns in 1952, Mac Speedy.
a four-time Pro Bowler and NFL champion with the Bears in 1946. He was one of the first defensive ends to gain fame as a pass rusher and to sprinkle. As the NFL's commissioner, he oversaw the league's expansion to 32 teams, its completion of 20 new stadium projects, and unprecedented labor piece, Paul Tagliabue. An executive first with the Colts and then the Dolphins, he rebuilt the New York football giants into an NFC powerhouse, leading to wins in Super Bowls 21 and 25, George Young. You know, he's executive of the year five times. He was smart enough to hire Bill Parcells. He was smart enough to draft me, and he created some of the Giants' most memorable championship teams. A round of applause for the Pro Football Hall of Fame class of 2020. Up next, we'll present the eight members of the 2021 Pro Football Hall of Fame class. That includes Charles Whitson, Peyton Manning, and many more. They will take their place on the field and solidify their place in history. And now it's time to introduce the Pro Football Hall of Fame class of 2021. A six-time All-Pro who won Super Bowl 40 as a member of the Pittsburgh Steelers, Alan Fatica. Another great Steeler. Nobody loves a great running game more than the Steelers and me, and this guy was amazing. Nice Louisiana boy. Tremendous run blocker, just as Jerome Bettis, the bus. Pittsburgh now has 26 Hall of Famers. He made history as the first Latino starting quarterback in NFL history. And when he led the Raiders to wins in Super Bowls 15 and 18, he became the first Hispanic head coach to be an NFL champion, Tom Flores. Replaced the legendary John Madden, went on to win two Super Bowls, one in Oakland, one in Los Angeles, one as a player, one as an assistant coach. More importantly, he's a good man, Tom Flores. Twice the NFL leader in receiving yards and Lions franchise record holder for career touchdown catches, Calvin Johnson. His Detroit, his Detroit teammates called him Megatron. Six foot five and a half, ran a four, three, five, forty, the most physically gifted receiver I've ever seen. Winner of Super Bowl 37 with Tampa Bay and celebrated by both the Bucks and Broncos in their rings of honor, John Lynch. But we call them 47 Red, baby. Huh? Any, any receiver they had their head on the swivel when they went to that Buccaneer secondary, there would not be a Tampa 2 defense without John Lynch. A seven-time first-team All-Pro and one of just two quarterbacks to lead two different teams to Super Bowl glory, Peyton Manning. One of the games is great. Peyton was MVP of this league five times. But Rob, what really impressed me was how he returned from a neck surgery to win Super Bowl at the age of 39. For five decades, he discovered players like Joe Green and John Stallworth, who grew into NFL legends and delivered championships to the Pittsburgh Steelers. Bill Nunn. Bill Nunn spent 46 seasons at the scout finding the Hall of Famers, all of these HBCU schools that no one would go to, and then they figured out how he was doing it, and he was the Pied Piper of scouts because they all followed him to these schools to make sure they could get the talent that he was finding. Three-time All-Pro and member of the NFL's All-Decade Team of the 1970s, Drew Pearson. Hey, Kurt, Drew Pearson caught the original Hail Mary touchdown, and that beat the Vikings back in the 75 playoffs. From Defensive Rookie of the Year in 1998 to Defensive Player of the Year in 2009, and now to Canton in 2021, Charles Woodson. He was a wrecking ball, and he's the one that did it all. You know, you look at him, he was a Heisman Trophy winner, 65 intercept interceptions, 20 sacks, 13 defensive touchdowns, and 33 forced fumbles. He did it all. Ladies and gentlemen, the Pro Football Hall of Fame class of 2021. <laughs> Lots of familiar names and familiar faces there. So many memories stand out. I don't know where you even start. My